Hello, and welcome back to U University. I'm Dr. Kelly. Well, we're having yet another rainy, cold, dreary day. Nothing new there, right? <laughs> but at least we haven't had snow yet. Over the past few weeks, I've been getting out my fall and winter clothes, sweaters, and flannel shirts, and I brought out my little collection of boots or the short booties, which I've been wearing a lot lately. I'm really into the short booties this year. Are you guys? Um, yeah, I've been wearing them almost every day. This weekend, I had a fabulous lunch with a Ravelry friend who also watches U University. And Linda, hi Linda, was passing through town on her way home from Minnesota or to Minnesota from uh, a knitting retreat. And she told me she would be in the area a few weeks ago, so we made plans to meet for lunch. So when I got to the restaurant uh, where we were meeting, I told the greeter that there would be two of us, but I wasn't sure if the other person was already there yet. And he said, oh, just go on in and look, uh, look around and see if she's at a table. And I said, well, I've never actually met her before and I don't know what she looks like. So I don't know what he was thinking then, but when Linda walked in the door, she was wearing the most beautiful hand-knit poncho. So it wasn't hard to figure out who she was. And we had the nicest lunch. The food was great and we sat and talked for three hours. So yeah, um, I love meeting up with online knitting friends. You feel like you already know each other. Well, today's show is the second in my holiday series for this year, and I'm gonna be talking about gift giving ideas that are completely free. Over the past few weeks, I've come across so many cute and really nice free items that you can print out from your home computer or that you can make for free. And I thought I would share some of these with you today. And these are literally things that you can get for no cost and give as gifts or some that will enhance your gifts in some way. As always, you might be really interested in these products yourself and want to get them for yourself. But regardless of who you get them for, I think it will be awesome to find out about all these items and make yourself look like a gift giving guru to your recipients. Plus, save some money in the process. Now I have on my jingle bell, jingle bell earrings and I'm ready to rock this list. So without further ado, let's get right to the festive freebies. And in case I forget to say this, there will be links to all the items I talk about today in the description box below. So you will be able to go find everything and get them all for yourself. Okay, the first things I wanna show you are these gift labels that you can print out and wrap around your knitted gifts. Now these are from everythingetsy.com and margonits.com. And these are just samples that I printed on plain printer paper, but I printed the actual labels to use on colored cardstock. So that's um, gonna be heavier than just regular printer paper. And you can use any color you want to customize your labels. Um, these I printed out on craft paper and I used a portrait orientation, which is this way. And the other ones I printed out on a light pink paper and I used landscape orientation or this way. Of course, you do need to cut these out by hand, but it was really simple because these are all basic straight lines. I was able to use my paper cutter and that made the process fast and easy. The labels say knit with love, handmade knit goodness, and knit goodness handmade with love. And this particular site does also have crochet labels that are basically the same, but they say crochet instead of knit. The second set says hand knit with love and hand knit with love heart. And then they have a space to write who the gift is to and from. They also have a crochet version for this one. Now to show you the labels in action, here is a shawl that I wrapped up in the pink version, and here is a cowl that I wrapped up in the craft version. Don't you think these are just adorable and really smart looking? I think this would make a beautiful statement if you gave your knitted gifts like this. You can even wrap them up in a box with wrapping paper, but then when you open the tissue paper, you get this. It just looks so pretty. 
I found another set of matching labels and tags that are really beautiful. And this is from We Black Cat Studios. This set says made with love and handmade with love and made especially for you. It comes with this long label that you can wrap around your knitted gift. And then there are four gift tags with matching artwork. Once again, I did print these out on heavy cardstock. Um, this time I printed them on ivory colored paper with my color printer and then I cut them out by hand. I was able to use my um, paper cutter on the long label and for these tags I cut those out by hand with a scissors and then punched a hole in each one with a hole punch. And I think they turned out so lovely with the flower and foliage design. The different colors really pop on the ivory paper. And here I've wrapped a pair of socks in the label, and I just love the look of this. On the label, it's, it's got handmade with love, and then to and from where you would write the recipient and the giver's names. Um, the gift tags also have to and from on them, so you could use these tags on a gift box or a bag, or you could even wrap a ribbon around your knitted gift and then attach the tag to that. Another set of tags that I love are these double-sided ones from Just Be Happy Life. There are actually two different designs. The first design pictures a crochet hook stuck into a ball of yarn at the top of the tag and then a skein of yarn at the bottom of the tag. And the writing says, handmade by and especially for. And I printed these out on craft cardstock. The second design could be used for knitting or crochet and says handmade with love and then to and from. And I printed these out on green cardstock. Now the information to be printed on the back side of the label includes the size of the item, which I think is great, especially for baby clothes or children's clothes, so the recipient will know what size it is. It also has a place for you to write down what the fiber content is, and that's good too, because of course it's always helpful to know what your garments and accessories are made out of, plus someone might be allergic to wool. So I think it's really nice that you can write down the exact fiber content of the gift item. And then lastly, there is a section to indicate how to launder the item, like what's the fabric here? And you're supposed to circle whatever care categories um, are appropriate. So you have cold and gentle cycle, hand wash, do not bleach, tumble dry, low heat, do not tumble dry, dry flat, iron on low heat, iron on medium heat, and do not iron. I love that you indicate the fabric care because that's really helpful to the recipient so they don't ruin their gift by washing it in a way that will damage it. When you download these printables, you'll get all four of these pages in the same file. Now, I don't have a fancy printer. I just printed pages one and three of the tags, of, which are the front of the tags. And then I reinserted the paper and printed pages two and four for the back of the tags. And then I cut them out by hand with the scissors and punched holes in the top. But be aware that the lines on the front and the back of the tags may not line up exactly after you've printed both sides of the paper. So you may have to trim the sides and the bottom a bit to obscure the lines on the front or the back. Now here's an example of one of these tags in use. Um, I printed the Handmade with Love tag on green paper and here is some here are some washcloths that I could give as a gift and I wrapped some burlap ribbon around them and then I attached the gift tag with a little green ribbon. Doesn't that look so nice? Now if you are a spinner and you might be giving your hand spun yarn to someone as a gift then you'll probably be interested in these next labels that are available at Cobberson.com. These are labels to wrap around a hank of your hand spun yarn. And they say hand spun with love and they have a spot to write in the yardage and the weight of the yarn as well and on the other side of the label there's a place for writing care instructions as well as the fiber content 
Now I printed these out on gray cardstock, and I think this label really dresses up your hand spun. Uh, plus it's awesome to provide the yardage and the care information to your recipient. And it's all right there on the label instead of dangling from a tag. So here is the uh, skein of my hand spun that is wrapped in this label. So I really like this one as well. I have another tag to show you, and this one is just a fabric care tag that I found on the Knit Picks website. So if you want to include only instructions for how to take care of a knitted item, then this would be perfect. In this download, there are six care labels, two each of three different laundering instructions. They all say, be gentle. Your new one-of-a-kind knit garment needs a little extra care. And then it indicates one of three care instructions. The first one would be appropriate for most animal fibers, and it says hand wash only, lay flat to dry. The second one would be good for superwash wool, and it says machine wash, gentle cycle, cold water, lay flat to dry. And the third one would work for most cotton and acrylic yarns, and it says machine wash, gentle cycle, cold water, tumble dry, low heat. So pretty much whatever your yarn requires for laundering is covered in this set. And again, I printed out these, these care labels on colored uh, cardstock paper and then cut out the labels by hand with a scissors. This was a little more challenging because the tags are round, but I think I did okay with it. You could also punch a hole in the top if you wanted to. But I could just see laying this label on top of a garment inside of a wrapped box containing, oh, like a little baby sweater or a hat and a scarf set or whatever it might be. These are just nice and decorative fabric care labels that you can include with a knitted gift. Okay, this next item is the cutest ever and I love it so much. This is definitely one of my favorites and I found it at froggingalong.com. It is a sweet little gift box that you print out on your printer, and I printed it on some light blue cardstock. So this is what it looks like on when you print it out, and then this is what, you, what it looks like when you put it together. You cut out around the outside lines, and then the inside lines you fold. Once all the lines are cut and folded, it makes this adorable little box. And to keep it together, you just glue the sides together. Um, the resulting box is a little higher in the back and lower in the front. It has a snowman face on the front side, and on the back it says, Handmade with Love. This little box is perfect for giving something like a hat. I'm going to put it, I'm going to do this, try to get this in here. Look at this. This is a hat I made a few weeks ago and I showed it on an earlier video and I just folded it up and stuck it inside this little box and look at how cute that is. A child's hat would be awesome to give in this box, but you could certainly use it for other things as well. If you have small children or grandchildren, I think this box would be amazing for holding a lot of different gifts. I think the kids would love it. Now on to some things that you could actually make into gifts themselves. Uh, first is this knitting journal page from Catherine Ivy. This knitting journal is kind of the old fashioned way to keep track of your projects. A lot of people do this on Ravelry today, but I also remember years ago before Ravelry that people used to keep knitting journals. In, in fact, here's a knitting journal that I kept in a notebook about 10 years ago. And this is just a simple notebook, but for each of my projects, I would, you know, tape the, let me find one. I would tape the yarn. I would tape some of the yarn. I might tape the yarn label and I would write notes about the project. And most of the time I would have uh, pictures of the finished object. Like here's one that I had. So this was just kind of a messy way to do this, but if I knew these knitting journal pages were available, it would have been way better because for on these sheets, there is a place for everything, even more information that I recorded in my knitting notebook. 
So just like on Ravelry, in this knitting journal, you give your project a name. There's a space for all your yarn information, what yarn it is, the colorway, the yardage, the fiber content, where you bought it, and how much it cost. Then there's the pattern information, the name of the pattern, what size you made, and any modifications. The dates you started and finished the project, the needle size, and gauge. There's even a few lines to write some notes about whatever you want to remember. And finally, you can attach a picture of the finished object and include a sample of the yarn and the yarn label. So you could print a whole bunch of these pages out. Um, and you might want to use a thicker paper so it can stand up to all the attachments like the yarn label, a sample of the yarn, um, a project, a, a picture of the project, and maybe a swatch. Um, kind of like a scrapbook. But then you would three hole punch the pages and put them in a pretty binder. I think the binder would work really well because it would give you plenty of space to include your yarn sample and maybe even a swatch. So it's, you know, it's a little more 3D than flat paper. So this would be a super nice knitting journal that you could give your friends or that you could keep for yourself. Um, I like, I really like this knitting journal idea and hope there are others who are interested in going back to the old fashioned paper organization for knitting projects. This next set of printables is so classy. It is another knitting journal, and there's actually also one for crochet. Um, these are available from ElizaEllis.com, um, but this set is a little different. It comes in a set with five different sheets that serve various purposes. You have the knitting or crochet project page, which has space for details about the project, pattern name, what yarn you use, the yarn colorway, where you got the yarn, um, the needle or hook sizes, project notes, and at the bottom of the page there's plenty of room to paste your yarn label, a swatch, or just a length of yarn, and a picture of the finished object. You also have a yarn inventory page where you can keep track of the yarn in your stash. That includes the name of the yarn, uh, where you purchased it, and how much you have in your stash. Over on the right side, um, there's a small space where you could put a tiny picture of the yarn or tape a piece of the yarn or write notes about it. And there are a total of eight entries on one page, so you can quit, fit quite a few of your yarns on this page. The next page is an inventory of hooks and needles. And I think this would work well for someone who maybe doesn't have a lot of different hooks and needles in the same size, but I don't know how practical it is for somebody like me who has multiple circular needles in the same size. And there's really no place on here to indicate the cord lengths um, or, or on your circulars. For example, you might have five size six circular needles, but they all have different cord lengths. So I wouldn't be able to use this particular page efficiently, but maybe this would work for a new knitter who doesn't have a lot of needles yet, or for a crocheter who doesn't have to worry about something like cord length because you're just keeping track of your hook sizes. At the bottom of the page though, there is a useful little chart of different yarn weights. So if you're a new knitter or a crocheter who's not yet familiar with all the different weights of yarn, from super fine to super bulky, then this would be really nice for you. The fourth page of this set is graph paper, and the label at the top says designs. So this is one you could use to play with different color work designs. The only thing is that this is not knitting graph paper, it's just regular squares, regular graph paper. So if you design something on this page, it's probably not going to look exactly the same once you knit it up because of the shape of the knit stitches. I mean, a knit stitch is not perfectly square. Now, I did talk about some free knitting graph paper in a previous video a few months ago, and in case you missed that, I will link to that in the um, information box below, as well as that knitting graph paper that I talked about. And finally, on the last page of this printable set is just blank, and it has the label sketches on the top. So you could use that for anything, drawing out some design ideas or what have you. Now, one of the things that I love about this set is that the pages are consistent in design. So all the pages obviously go together. 
and you have a choice of four different colors to choose from. So you have blue, it's blue, and you have peach, and you have plum, and you have green to choose from. And you can make all the pages match in color as well. Um, I think it would be really nice to set up a knitting notebook to give as a gift to a friend or for yourself. And you can just choose the pages you want to include out of this. Maybe you print out like 20 knitting project pages, 10 um, yarn inventory pages, 10 design pages, and 10 sketch pages. And then you punch them with a three hole punch, put them into a pretty three ring binder like these that you can get at Target and give it to your friend as a holiday gift. I think that would be such a nice gift, especially for someone who is a new crafter or someone who's into old school organization and pretty things. Okay, if you or your friends are sewists, then Eliza Ellis also has a set of pages for you. This set has sewing project page with space for the details of your project, the pattern, fabric used, where you got the fabrics, what threads you're using, and some lines for project notes. Then at the bottom, there are several spaces to mount small fabric swatches and a larger place for a bigger swatch or a photograph of your finished project. You also get a fabric inventory that is similar to the yarn inventory one that I just talked about. There's an inventory page for notions and trim, so you can keep track of those as well. And then the last two pages are the same designs and uh, sketches page that I just talked about. The design page has graph paper on it and the sketches page is just a blank sheet. So again, you can customize um, this in terms of the pages you choose to include in a binder as well as the color you pick for the theme. And this, this um, set has the same four colors to pick from, plum, blue, green, and peach. Now I printed this whole set out in the plum color so you can see what it looks like with all the matching pages. And those are some sets of pretty printables from ElizaEllis.com. Another nice set of printables is from Little Cotton Rabbits. This set is called Knitting Notes and it would be a great gift for someone who is starting to dabble in knitting design. The first page is just a whole blank page of lines. Um, I really like this because a designer will likely want to keep detailed notes on a new design or something they're playing with. But I also think this can be handy for any knitter. Sometimes you might want to write more than what will fit into the small space on one of those project pages I just showed you. Or, I don't know, you might just want to keep a knitting diary. So I think this notes page is so versatile and you can make it whatever you want. The second page is a small sheet of graph paper. So it's the same idea as in the last set I was just talking about. But the third and fourth pages are really unique, really cool, because they are a list of row numbers. And rows 1 through 25 are on the first page, and rows 26 through 54 are on the second page. So if you know someone who's a budding designer, I think it would be really useful for them to be able to draw out their design on the graph paper and then write it out into pattern format on the next pages. Like the last printable sets I was telling about, you could compile a bunch of these uh, pages into a pretty three ring binder and make a gift out of it. Also, you could mix and match these pages with the sets that I was previously talking about. So you could give your gift recipient or yourself something that is tailor made. All right, weavers, I haven't forgotten about you. Here is a project record sheet for you that is from the Craftsy website. I think this is such a great way to keep track of a weaving project. So here you have places to write in the title of your project, the date, and your goal with this weaving project. Then you have space to specify the yarns used for your warp and weft, as well as the draft used. Then you have space for the technical information like the length of warp, number of ends, 
width in read, EPI or ends per inch, and PPI or picks per inch. Next, you have some measurements of the dimensions of the project on the loom, off the loom, and after wet finishing. And then at the bottom of the page, you have some space for project notes and reflections. I love that you have a place to write down your reflections because it seems like we always learn something from doing a project. And on this sheet, you have your goal recorded at the top, and then at the bottom in the reflections, you could write about whether your goal was achieved, what you could have done differently, tweaks that you had to make, and things like that. And this is, again, the weaving project record sheet from Craftsy. Now spinners, here's one for you. This is a spinning record sheet from Clada Fiber Arts. Again, I love that you're able to organize your spinning project nicely onto one page. For this one, you have your project name at the top and then the fiber content and where you got it right below that. The rest of the page is organized into neat boxes. And I'll cover what's over on the right hand side first because that's all about the fiber prep, which you would be doing first. Here you have places to record the characteristics of the fiber like CPI or crimps per inch, the staple length, the percent elasticity, and the loft. Then you have lines to write down the fiber color, the hand of the fiber, which means how it feels when it's handled, and the luster or shine. If you clean the fiber yourself, there's a place to indicate how you scoured it, like with detergent or soap, the amount that you used, and the water temperature. Then if you used combs or carding tools or anything else, you can indicate that. And finally, you can state the final fiber prep, like if you spun from row lags or roving, or if it's something else, there's plenty of space to write that in. Now, as far as the project, there is a box for recording information about the spun singles. The yardage, wraps per inch, direction of the twist, um, Z or S, whether you spun worsted or woolen, the type of draw that you used, and the spinning wheel drive ratio. At the bottom is a box for noting the plied yarn characteristics the final yardage, wraps per inch, and the same information as I just mentioned. Finally, in the top left, you have a box to record the project that you use the hand spun yarn for, whether it was a knit or woven project, and the finished dimensions, as well as the dimensions after fulling, if you did that. So yeah, I think that's a really neat spinning record that you could bundle together in a pretty binder as a gift for a spinning friend. Next is another printable from Craftsy, and this is a project planner for your holiday knitting. So on this sheet, you have space to plan out three projects. You have a place for the project name, who it's for, the deadline for finishing it, and a single line for notes. There's space to record your yarn and whether it's already in your stash or if you need to order it. Finally, there's a list section to write down all the things you'll need to finish the project, like the needles, maybe buttons, embroidery, thread, tapestry needle, cable needle, or other supplies. I think this little holiday project planner is perfect to use right now to help us organize our thoughts and figure out exactly what we're going to be doing for holiday projects. This might be something you want to print out for yourself to plan out the making of your knitted gifts. So I think that is really handy. Okay, this is the last printable I'm going to show you today, and it is a sheet of swatch tags from TrixieKnitter.com. This page contains 12 tags for recording information about swatches that you knit for various projects. I know that sometimes you might knit a swatch and then by the time you get around to actually knitting the project, you've forgotten all about the specifics of your swatch. Or sometimes you make uh, several different swatches on different size needles. Or if you're going to a yarn tasting event at your local yarn shop, these would be great to record information about the yarns that you try out. 
Basically, this little tag has room for writing down what yarn you used, the needle size, a short note if you want to remember something about the yarn, and then a box to check if you blocked the swatch. So these are super handy. You can print them on cardstock. I printed these on a little purple cardstock and then used my paper cutter to cut them apart. And I punched a hole in the corner. And you could attach the tag to your swatch with something like um, a little, uh, one of these little knitter safety pins or removable stitch markers. So yeah, this could be a cute little gift or stocking stuffer for your knitting friends. Now, I'm not gonna talk about a lot of free knitting or crochet patterns here because there are hundreds or probably thousands of them available on Ravelry, as well as if you just do a general Google search for free knitting patterns. So of course, you can find free patterns all over the place to knit or crochet as gifts for your family or even for swaps. But I did want to mention a couple of free patterns that are holiday related. So from webs, you can get a free pattern for these beautiful Christmas stockings. So if you're interested in making something like this, maybe for your kids or grandkids, or maybe to simply decorate your fireplace mantle, this is a free pattern and these are made with worsted weight yarn. So they'll go a little faster than if it was fingering weight yarn. Another idea that you could use for a gift is to make tree ornaments like these adorable little mouse ballerinas. This pattern is from Moogly and on their website they have a bunch of free patterns for different ornaments. I think something like this would be a quick project and something fun to give in a swap or just something small to give to a knitting friend. You could even use the ornament as a decoration on the package if you're giving the person another gift. So there's a lot of different ornaments that you can knit. For Hanukkah, here is a sweet little crocheted striped drawstring pouch that can be used for gelt and other gifts. It's a free pattern that wouldn't take long at all to make. And you can even use some leftover yarn to make the stripes so you don't have to go out and buy yarn for this project. I think this is super cute and a nice gift pouch for your kids or grandkids. And then I have to mention these patterns for teeny toys. These are from In The Loop Knitting and there are quite a few free patterns on their website. These particular ones are all for very small toys. Some examples of the free patterns for teeny toys are these bears, a Scotty dog, an elephant, a koala, a lion, an owl, a baby seal, these adorable sheep, a set of monsters that are like nesting dolls and they nest inside the mouth of the bigger one. That is so cute. And then there is a pattern for these teeny bunnies. And I actually made one of these bunnies and here it is. I'm not joking when I say they are teeny. How cute is this? I made this little bunny using toothpicks for knitting needles. <laughs> I used fingering weight yarn and the toothpicks ended up being around a US size one or 2.25 millimeter. Not exactly, but pretty close. Now toothpicks are not the smoothest. I mean, they do not sand down the sides of them, but they weren't so rough that they were catching on the yarn. You're working with such a small number of stitches, it seemed like toothpicks would be, you know, would work well, and it was okay. They're not my favorite to knit with though, but they're only two and a half inches long, as opposed to my shortest DPNs that are probably like four inches long. So it worked fine with the toothpicks, and I made this teeny little bunny in probably a half an hour or less. And I mean, this is the size of these tiny toys. Um, I think these wouldn't be such cute gifts for children, maybe a little older children. I probably wouldn't give them to very young children who would put them in their mouth. It would definitely be a choking hazard. But a little older child would adore something like this and maybe collect them in a small basket or something. You could even put a, a yarn loop on these and make ornaments to decorate your tree. That could be really fun. So yeah, these are teeny toy knitting patterns you can get for free from In The Loop Knitting 
www.thelovelyfriendshop.com. All right, my last free item is, well, I guess it's a gift that you could give someone. These are knitting and yarn related desktop wallpapers from Knit Picks. They have a whole bunch of background images of yarn and knitted projects that you can download yourself for free and use them for your wallpaper on your computer screen. And because you can download them onto your own computer, not only can you use them, but you could email one as an attachment to a friend with your happy holiday message. So you could give an electronic gift. I think these are some really pretty and fun pictures to choose from. So you could definitely download all the ones you like. And then you can decorate your computer with a yarn theme and you can change it as often as you want. So I thought that was a really fun and easy gift for others or for yourself. And that is my entire list of freebies for fiber artists. Now you guys, this is just the tip of the iceberg. There are so many other free printable items that you could use as gifts or that you could use to decorate your gifts. Even on the websites that I talked about today and that I'm linking below, there are many other printables and free downloads that you could check out as well. Now let me say one thing before you start downloading stuff from the internet, always be careful what you're downloading. Read the instructions and don't just click on any button that says download because sometimes those download buttons are just ads and then you could end up with something you don't want on your computer. Now most of these free printable pages that I talked about today are downloaded by clicking the picture of the item or scrolling down to the end of the post where they give you the links. But I did notice that some of the pages have ads that say download here. And if you click on that button, it's not gonna download what you're looking for. So just be careful about that. Pay attention and follow the directions for how to get the printables that you're looking for. And of course, that's advice for any time you're downloading something on the internet. Again, I will have links to all the items I talked about today in the description box below, so you can go check them out and get them for yourself. Well, that brings us to the end of today's show. I hope that you enjoyed finding out about some free things that you can get at no cost for giving as gifts or for helping to decorate your gift packages. So did you find anything that you might use in your gift giving this year? or maybe something that you'll use for yourself. Let me know your thoughts and reactions in the comment section below. Or maybe you've already used some of these ideas. And if so, what'd you think? Did you like them? Did it work out for you? Um, do you have any suggestions for other free items that people can download or access in other ways? Please share your experiences below so we can all benefit. You know, I always re read and respond to all of your comments and I really enjoy hearing from you. And of course, please leave me a comment if you have any questions about today's show or if you have an idea for uh, what you'd like to see on future episodes or if you'd like to see a product tested. I've gotten some great ideas for future videos and there are definitely some of these shows in the works. So keep those suggestions coming. Thank you for spending some time with me today and I'll see you in the next video. Next week, I'm going to continue my holiday series and talk about some quick holiday gifts to knit. I'll be giving you some ideas for interesting projects that can be knit up in a fairly short time and some resources where you can find pattern ideas for last minute gifts. I'll also be showing some ideas for projects you can knit using a single skein of yarn. So with the holidays coming up in the next few weeks, you might find some useful information in my next video. So I hope you'll join me for that. And in the meantime, stay smart and have a sparkly week.